Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. Today we're taking a look at Bargain Basement Bathysphere. This is a solo roll and write style game. Um, this is, as far as I can tell, originally was a print and play, and it is a 20 scenario game. On the back it says 15 minutes per person. It's for one person. We're gonna roll dice and go down with your bathysphere, trying to do missions, whatever it might be, rescuing people, exploring, finding unique things out there in the ocean, avoiding a tentacle beast, and then coming back to the surface. Um, this says it's even more fun when you forget to repair your bath sphere and the whole thing implodes in a spectacular testament to unlimited ambition. Okay, I don't know what that means, but um, anyhow, there's a lot of humor on the back of this box, which I find to be odd. I mean, they're like, do not actually attempt to enter the bathosphere meeple. Great. Um, but let's take a look at this and we'll be right back. Okay, so there are multiple boards in this game. Rescue Party here is one of the boards. We also have Discovery Cove and we have the Trench. And it's possible that you would even use more than one board, but you're going to be playing through so the rule book here, and I'm not a huge fan of how this rule book is set up. And that's because they explain the basics on how to play the game. And then they show you the first scenario and they teach some rules. Then the second scenario is kind of the same thing. The third scenario, they teach some more rules. And then they teach you another rule for the game, which would have been really nice to have known this before playing the scenario. But this is kind of like another mini game where you're collecting resources and collecting things to give you bonuses. You'll be able to spend them to get these bonuses to use on future missions. So it's kind of a campaign game, but they teach you rules as you go by. Like here's the gizmos and things like that. Now, what's important to note here is when you play the scenario, it will show you what part of the map you can use. This is another problem I have with the game because you know, when you look at the scenario, you always have to kind of compare here. I would draw like lines on the map to kind of show like, hey, you can't go through that spot. I think that's like really the only way that you can do it to show where you can go through it. That's what I would do to kind of keep that in, in check. It would be easier if there was maybe an overlay. I'm not sure the best way to do it. So these all sound like nitpicking things, but I'm telling you when I want to know about a rule in the rule book, I thought that to be a problem because I had to find which scenario was the one that introduced that rule. Now, let's talk about the gameplay itself. So I'm not going to explain everything because there's a lot. But you have a little submarine, and my copy is missing a submarine, so we're going to use this little elephant here. And you're going to start here. And what you're going to do is you're going to have a pool of dice that you'll roll, and when you, you're going to be using dice, and then when your dice are gone, or you could actually re-roll them kind of whenever you want, but every time you do that, negative things will happen. You'll run out of oxygen, whatever. You have three resources, oxygen, damage, and stress. And these are important because you don't want to get any of them. As you, you can see, the game will end if you run out of any of them. If you lose the oxygen, different uh, people that you're trying to rescue will go under. As you lose stress, you'll take damage on the ship. And also you have fewer dice as you take damage. So there's things like that. But anyway, on your turn, you're going to choose a die and you're going to move exactly that many spaces. And you can move up or down. A lot of these missions are like, how low can you go before you decide to go back up? Because you do need to get out. But whenever you move, you move those spaces exactly. Now on this board, and let me zoom in here so you can see. On this board, there are various spaces. There are gray and white spaces. White spaces are always some sort of doodad thing happening here. There's a whirlwind and, you know, be careful of those numbers. But the gray spaces, you'll see this says minus one stress. So if I land on that space exactly, so... I, let's say I move three. One, two, three. The space that you land on is crossed off, and I don't have to deal with what's on it. But any space that I pass by will happen. So if I move three here, I will take two stress. So you're trying to, as you come by, some of the worst things that you will find, like this one here is lose one stress and lose one oxygen. I want to land on that if possible. Um, so I'm trying to land on these because when I pass them going up, I'm going to take it the other way. Uh, usually you'll cross them off when you run by them, but when there's two things on it, when you cross it one way, you'll take one thing, and when you cross it the other, you'll take the other thing. 
So that's the general principle. You're kind of using these dice and as the game, as the scenarios go by, you'll get reroll tokens and there will be ways to modify the dice, but you're trying to get down here and there's different scenarios. Sometimes you're trying to rescue very specific um, uh, deep sea divers who have gotten stuck all over the map. Uh, you'll see that there's all kinds of little cool things that they're going to introduce as the map goes by. And like I said, there's more than one map. And so the basic concept is you have that pool of dice and you're using that dice to get in, get out. You can see this one, the trench, the murky one has this thing. You'll see there's one like this, which is using two different maps. They kind of connect to each other. So it's going to take much longer. But that's, that's the essential basics of the game, is you have this pool of dice, you spend them, eventually you have to re-roll it, which is bad, and you're trying to do it in a certain amount of time frame. It's kind of like a timer built into the game. Getting more dice is good, the more dice you have, the more time you have between turns, but as your ship takes damage, you also lose dice too. So that's the basic general rules, but there's a whole lot more, and I'll give it the benefit of, there's a lot of different things, and they, they take this system and definitely run it through its paces. Some of you are thinking, Tom, why are you playing this game? You're not a big solo gamer, but I am kind of, I like playing solo games. Um, I like playing through, especially things that are campaign oriented. Um, and uh, this one, in fact, uh, I had Mike play it too, because I was curious and his thoughts and mine sim were very similar to each other. So that's why I'm taking a look here at this. I already mentioned my problem with the rules and I get on one hand, I get it. And some people are going to probably like that more than me. I, I don't want every mission to be the same thing. It's just that it constantly felt like it was changing and shifting. And this 15 minutes per mission here in the back of the box, that's, yeah, the first one's 15 minutes. They're always longer than that because you're sitting there thinking, I hope, carefully about it because it is a giant push your luck game. You're trying to move down as fast as you can, especially in the later scenarios. You want to get down, but you also are trying to land on stuff. You're trying to land on, as time goes by, collect different sorts of sea life so that you can get these other benefits that go up there. And so you and you want to not run over too much stuff, and you want to rescue the different uh, the the different uh, deep sea divers who are lost. Which, by the way, I found the deep sea diver thing to be. I think it felt fairly random, sometimes. I would be like, oh, well, we'll never be able to rescue that guy just based on the numbers that were rolled for them. It is what it is, I suppose. I guess you can restart the scenario. But, but you're thinking very carefully. And so from a strategic aspect, that's cool. Like the idea, and it takes a bit to understand, like you move past stuff, it's bad. If you land on it, most of the time, it's good. And then there's various points you can get. Um, sometimes it mentions points. And I was like, how are, can you even get that many points? I'm still not sure sometimes how things can be done in certain scenarios. Like, can you even get that many points? I'm sure it's possible, but you have to kind of sit there and plan before you even go down into the, the depths. There's a lot of planning, for, at least for me, involving, okay, I need this many points. I, this gives me points, that gives me points. If I reach that, it gets me points. If I rescue this person, it gives me points, but I can't rescue them. I won't have enough time to do that and this, but I can rescue this person. So I kind of plan everything out ahead of time, and then you roll the dice. And yes, the way the dice happen, things might change in there, but it does add a, a degree of luck because you're going to sit there and figure out the optimal path, but then you're also tied to the dice. For me, this is a 6 out of 10. I find it to be an interesting concept, but it's almost more work than fun. Now, don't get me wrong. I think the theme is well done. I think that they did a good job at bringing out how all this fits together pretty well. There's a lot of, you know, there's three different boards and things, but the technical issues, the fact that I have to spend a lot of time figuring out where in the board I'm allowed to go, there are times where it will show you go to here, go to the side and down, and I've gone and started going to the side and realized I picked a different side trail than the one in the book, and I have to go back and erase that. I, that's, that was a little annoying, and looking up a rule, remembering which scenario that rule was introduced in sometimes, I also found to be a little annoying. So that's, that's one thing. But the game itself is fine. It's just that it never really grabbed me. I just kept, I kept feeling like work. I was like, oh, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. Oh, I got beat over by, I needed to roll a one and I rolled five fives. You know, yes, there's a reroll token. Now's the time to use that or something. 
but I found it to be an interesting game that I think some people are going to really like. But for me, it felt a lot more about a much ado about nothing in a sense. That's, that, that's kind of my gut feeling towards it. The humor on the boards, the humor in the scenarios, and the slow introduction of stuff is okay. But I think I would have preferred better a straightforward rule set, and then each scenario might include one new thing, one minor thing. As it was, I felt like I was learning the game in chunks. And so as I went through, I was like, oh, now I have to kind of rethink how this works and all. So, um, but I didn't dislike the idea. I like the idea of picking the dice and picking them. Okay, if I move four here and then three and then two, or I can move two, then four, then three. That part is interesting to me. It ain't 15 minutes, but I found that to be fun. So again, this is going to be for a certain type of group of people. And I think a lot of people are going to really enjoy it. So that's Bargain Basement Bathosphere. I'm Tom Vassell. We'll see you next time.